Dimp Digital presents Idle Game Chat. Cool. Hello, Apps here from Dimp Digital. Welcome to Idle Game Chat. This is Dimp Digital's flagship video game podcast where we take you through the ups and downs of the wonderful world of video games. We are here on your favourite podcast app and YouTube, absolutely free. However, if you want to support this grassroots independent endeavour, head over to patreon.com forward slash Dimp Digital or twitch.tv slash Digital and join the community. Hashtag hand in pocket. A big thank you to our current patrons who subscribe over there and those on Twitch also. We would be here without you, but it, you, have, you have to say thank you now and again, I find. Yeah. Those liars that say, oh, we wouldn't be here without you. What are you, what are you up to? <laughs> Not doing it for the passion, are you, greedy bastards? We've been doing it almost fucking eight years with nothing, so... Thank you, anyway. Was that too backhanded? Will they just leave now? Mm, nah, they're here for the long haul. They love us. They, they better do, because it is the Dukes of Essex. The governors are gaming are back, and I'm joined by this disgraced and dishonest dimp digital gaming <laughs> quiz charlatan known as Lashit, Tom Atkins, not a cock. How's it going? Oh. Yep. Ot. <laughs> ot, ot. Oh, it's, bloody um, ot. Yeah. Another e- wait. Right. We're in summer now, mm. and we get like three days where it's slightly higher than twenty-five degrees, and we get it called heat wave. Yep. When summer just normally summer? Don't when know. Stop in heat wave. I seem to remember last year we got like one day where it was over twenty-five. Whereas this yeah. time we've had it, we had those thirty plus days. Oh, thirty plus got the forty in one yeah. day, didn't it? And yeah. then we're in the in the midst of high. 20s into the 30s potentially for the next few days so i don't know i don't know like as droughts being fucking declared so they're going to take everyone's water away that gives them new power oh, God sake. Lower. just just leave your hose on overnight fuck them off <laughs> don't don't because it'll cost you a fortune actually because uh True. it's not uh, it's not free that resource like what some people think anyway we are back and there's only one good way it's the undisputed best way to start off a video game podcast. And it is delay news. <laughs> and we've got a brace of them this time. Oh, the doobler. Yeah. First off, publisher 2K has delayed the release of Fire Axe's strategy game, Marvel's Midnight Suns. Mm. Took that headline and that little synopsis from VGC. <laughs> In a statement published on Monday, 2K said the game was only recently well, sorry, which was only recently issued an October release date, so this was due to come in the next sort of eight weeks or so, will now arrive sometime during its current fiscal year, which ends in March 2023. So it could be November, it could be December. More likely it's going to be January, February, March next year. And uh, again, looks like it's polishing, looks like it's not ready, doesn't seem like there's, been, there's no Rough details being... boots, as I last saw. Well, there was they they had those previews come out, and because Fire Axis do XCOM, right? Yeah, which is a very highly yeah. thought of strategy game, uh, turn based and whatnot. I've had a go at the first one, and it is very difficult. Put me off yeah. a little bit, but I can see why people get attached to them. And I guess the the more casual version, which I don't think's necessarily easy, is the Mario plus Rabbids games that have yeah. come out. Similar sort of take there, but Midnight Suns sounded like a little bit different. It had like some RPG elements, which were present mm. actually in XCOM, but also there was like a card you'd use cards oh, to sort of build. Yeah, and I didn't. To be honest, once I started reading about, it, I was like, I just need to wait and I want. I need a big blowout of this to understand it. Yeah, yeah. But it's not coming, so Billy. we'll be likely seeing that in 2023. And then the other one is is Hogwarts Legacy. So no oh. real surprise there. No. It's uh, got an, it's got an actual release date rather than just like it's coming sometime. So now it's the tenth of February, twenty twenty three. Previously, it had been scheduled for holiday, twenty 
22. And uh, apparently they need, quote, a little bit, a little more, a little bit more time to deliver the best possible game experience. So oh. that's um, apparently it's still coming to Switch as well. That is um, not on that day. It's coming later. Yeah. So there's some sort of work Pull being that done. down first. Mm. <laughs> um, any opinion on these? I mean, we obviously do not want games coming out unfinished mm. and whatnot. But does this oh, is this no, put, does this put not. a dagger in your your heart of because. No. Cause Hogwarts fair, never had a release date, so I was always like, "No, that, that could be any time." So I was, I was yeah, expecting I didn't this. Expect that this year. Yeah, I'm meh on the on the Harry Potter franchise. You know, mm. I'm quite intrigued by the game. I think it did look quite fun from what I saw, but wasn't one that's screaming at me. That thing, Midnight Suns again. You know, Marvel game. It's not my bag. Um, that no. type of game. Um, certainly the turn-based strategy element that's not something I look for in a game no but it, some of the characters look cool the style they were going for but yeah I'm not like I say the last I saw of it I watched a couple of bits of gameplay and I was like oh Jesus this this needs to get back in the oven yeah so I think they heard me if anything probably I mean they all listen they're all mm. they're all friends they're listening the show well, there's only one real official friend of the show and it's Phil Phil and, and some are saying he's Hanging on by his fingernails, but cool. twenty twenty three might have to be his year. But no, that's a that's a bit of a dagger blow to Biff as well because he's got Hogwarts Legacy and his oh. Fantasy Gaming League Grand Prix team. He was about ready to hang up transfer activity. He's now going to be called into action. And like I keep saying, people say I shouldn't give my opinion because I'm helping, but I'm, I don't know what I'm <laughs> talking about. He's got that Callisto protocol sitting there in December. I mean, that is wary. Playing that fire. Also- also could do with a, uh, in my humble opinion, seems like it needs a little polish up, but cool. we'll see. He's got, beyond the, <laughs> he's got beyond the scenes knowledge, this one. No, to be fair, what they even showed didn't look especially smooth. And you always think, hmm, mm. we're not that far away from this. Surely, no. surely the best foot forward has to come soon, mm. where it looks like it's not going to be like that. But we, we will see. Uh, light week for news and whatnot, which is fine. Mm-hmm. We're not going to manufacture stuff Make and talk up. bollocks. Because everyone's <laughs> talking about this fucking Xbox and PlayStation Battle. legal... Do- Stopping him, isn't it? Phil. Stopping Gate. No, he's blaming No, Jim. 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 They're all doing it. They're bu- yeah, I would be surprised it. if Xbox haven't done that in the past. It doesn't... Yeah. My view is these are two... One's a trillion dollar company. One's a billion dollar company. The trillion mm. dollar company's trying to buy a billion dollar publisher... The billion dollar company that's the rival to the trillion dollar company wants to put their best foot forward and their own self interest at heart. So when the regulators ask what they think, they say, Wow, well, it's obviously going to be very bad for us, isn't it? It's an absolute <laughs> disaster. And then the trillion dollar company who want the deal to go through are going, Whoa, oh, that's bollocks. Of course it's not. This is, the, this is the greatest thing for game. And people are like attaching their console warrior flags to this. And they're not, yeah. they're not, they don't care about you. This is just them <laughs> doing what they need to do to make even more money. They don't need, this is not some sort of fucking virtual cry for them to say, Xbox and PlayStation fans unite and follow yeah. us into the Brazilian regulation row. It's like, <laughs> fucking shut up. I'll be, you know, I said the other week, I'll be happy once The Last of Us remakes out so everyone can stop. Ooh, yeah. Wait. What, what is it? Is it re- I'll be glad when this fucking Activision deal goes through so we can yeah. stop waffling about it. Waffling about it. Get it out. No. So we cut Back the bollocks. Down. We've got a couple mm. of things. We we did... <laughs> we, we both sat through the Splatoon Direct. Oh. I'm not going to go blow... I've made all the notes. I'm not going to go blow for blow yeah. through everything that was seen there. Just wanted to get some general thoughts. Um, yeah. One thing I, I noticed is the, the way that they were talking, like the, the, the dialogue that was being used, like a narrated Minions. thing. Well, <laughs> it's got that vibe, isn't it? But she kept saying, oh, it appears that the open beta will be on the top. What do you mean it appears? Yeah, Are you sure? Clarification. Tell me. Clarification. Yeah. Oh, it appears there's going to be some new weapon. What do you mean it appears? Yes, there is going to be. halfway through as well, the old girl. Yeah, she, hung up. she had a little, little, little rest. <laughs> Anyway, thoughts on Splatoon Three? Now you've seen this, will it ever? Ooh. Will it make an Adkins pre-order list near you? Nah, <laughs> I, I like. It's weird because 
I did enjoy my time. Like I think I only put about twenty hours into the first one. Or I'd mm. say the first one. It was two. Even that though, that was from what I'm told was pretty much a remake of one. Yeah. And this just looks like a continuation of this. Like to be fair to him. Like while I was sitting down, I was sort of, you know, I was sitting there thinking, "Well, oh, this ain't really for me." I'm, I've already made my mind up that it's not going to be a day one purchase. Yeah, I think I bought two because it was very, very early on in that uh, switch. It was exciting life. those first couple of years exactly. of the switch. It was like because a lot of people skipped the Wii U. This was. Mm. Splatoon 2 was like the follow up to that so I hadn't played Splatoon I was like oh let's no. give it all go there was a lot of excitement for those first couple of years but I'm almost mirroring what, what you're saying in terms of my yeah. thoughts it's like I wouldn't mind playing the campaign on this perhaps yeah but yeah I enjoyed the campaign on the first more so but we, I think we jumped I jumped in with you at one point Salmon even Paper I think me and Paper had a go on that dodgy old bloody yeah. app um, yeah and yeah, to be fair, like the stuff they've gone for, it does seem like a new evolution of that. You know, there's more. They've added a lot of stuff. To be fair, to them, there is a lot of like improvements here, and some of the stuff was a bit like, well, we we knew it wasn't there to start with. Yeah, the, you know, yeah. but you can do things like private lobbies now. They it seems like they're having some sort of seasons involved, but they're calling them yeah. catalogs. They've got these weird yeah. terms for everything in it. I guess... thought that. I, I, did you get the impression that there's going to be microtransactions in it. I saw that. It was two there currencies was, I saw. Two currencies I saw, yeah. And there was one, I forget what it was called. Sheldon licenses. Sheldon which, licenses, that was it. And it was like one per gun or yeah, something. Yeah. I was like, cool, oh, that smells like a fucking... Well, <laughs> they never actually said, but they did say you could earn those from battling mm-hmm. and being more proficient with certain weapons. I think. Yeah. Can, so it feels like it shouldn't be like with Nintendo. They don't tend to go for that route. But no, they don't. They've got like fucking Fortnite on there. No, yeah. but then they're not managing it's that. Oh, they're just taking no, a little slice. True. Epic's going well. We'll settle that up. But they, the only thing they said about paid stuff is they they are planning again. Planning, yeah. not we're going to. I'm sure they will add quote, large-scale paid DLC. So maybe yeah, it's just going to be that, and maybe the seasons are just going to run and people just run. sort of hop in. and I used to get involved, I think they kept continuing it again, is the they did like the little live events where they sort of, you had two teams. Right? It was like yes, thing, yeah, like a know, Splatfest. Your, Splatfest, that's yeah. it. Yeah, they're going to continue. So yeah, that's, it's good to see they've got that. But yeah, just from what I saw, uh, it didn't really tickle bollards. It was just nah. like, oh, okay, so it's just more of the same, but... You know, a few improvements here, some new additions. Not only loads of new modes and stuff. Like, I know, I think we had, we did get that salmon run, didn't we? Towards yeah. The end. Yeah, we got a bit of a like go a, at that, that co op. Like a bit of horde mode. That's it. The campaign. They've even stuck in a little weird card game. It was like a crack or Tetris y type card game, whatever it was. Yeah. So, ooh, interesting. But yeah, nothing that really did grab bollards and go, I'll tell you what, I'm going to buy this. Yeah. I'm. Um, I'm of the opinion that maybe if it it will go on sale one day, maybe then yeah. I'll do it and play the campaign yeah, and maybe yeah. mess around with the online. Yeah, they didn't really show much of the game. It was like no, the it was the shortest. Little, the shortest little bit, unless they're going to save a big trailer for it or something. But yeah, it was like that was the main part I was like looking for, to be honest. And that yeah. was the, the shortest section. But yeah, any other thoughts from yourself? No, other than to say that like I did enjoy my time with Splatoon 2. I didn't love it, but I didn't think no. it was bad by any. And I actually. You know, it is unique. It is a unique yeah, multiplayer yeah, yeah. game, if nothing else. But my time on multiplayer competitive mm. stuff is kind of... I feel like it's nearly over. I haven't played anything competitive for a while now. There was that Valorant yeah. that I was getting involved with at the early part of the, the year. But I'm, I've never really got the urge. Co-op I'm up for. Like, yep. you know, that Salmon Run's not quite it. It's just a, it's just no, horde it's mode. I need something to play mode, through. Yeah. Like a campaign together, like gears or something like that. But Salmon's going to be livid again. Now, I know, he? but he, but he, look, I'm, look, I'm giving him credit, saying that this of all the multiplayer stuff out there, this is certainly unique and was was good fun to play. Yeah. Uh, there was just some issues with the online part that we would go in a party together and then be put on opposite teams and we'd be like, right. yeah. and we were using that fucking app to do the voice oh, chat. I mean, it was all just on. a bit of a, a bollock. At the end, was we just talking for each other in WhatsApp? Yeah, we did. I yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Like, uh, and most people now, I know, yeah. just use Discord. Yeah, that is the way. <laughs> but no, they, I, I, again, I like the fact they gave half an hour of this and yeah, showed, me team, showed me team off. Yeah, Meaty Direct for one game. Yeah. Them, which is quite good. That's what we want to see. Show it off. 
But Ooh. a unique and creative game, if nothing else, probably just doesn't feel fall in my wheelhouse these days. But who knows? You know, so I might see it on offer one day for 30 quid and think, that's worth a go for the campaign. Although, I would probably want to play the DLC for two, which they released. Because I, yeah. I never went well, through that. Well, Really? No, I never did. And when they sort of said about mm. um, there'll be paid DLC, I thought, "Cool." Oh. But yeah, I've got a feeling that might be included now in that uh, expansion pass. Oh, oh! Feeling it was. You could be right, actually. In yeah, fact, so thought... it'll be interesting to see the large-scale paid DLC. Whether that comes into the expansion pack of Nintendo Online, I completely oh. forgot about all that. Ooh. Yeah, I think there's two of them. There's. I remember ones that I was sort of like. There was because straight from the back they chucked that fucking um, was it Animal Crossing? Did they chuck in? Yeah, yeah that was it. That was and it. then the new yeah, Crossing. now I think it was this. Um, is Mario Kart in? There? I can't Mario remember. Kart. Mario that Kart was, stuff. I was is think, that going yeah. in there? Yeah, mm. so it's, yeah, it's like three big DLCs now. I was yeah. like, oh, chuck in that um, bloody Breath of the Wild one that I've been thinking about buying, but. Yeah, so I've had that sitting there. I'll get me money's worth out of it, so I think that might tipple me over just to get what they want to do in that expansion pack is chuck a few old games on there now and again. Yeah, Just as a tempter. Decent. Then I might just actually go. go for it. But Splatoon 3, they did say the campaign's going to close out. It's a, an epic finale, they called it. Mm. So they didn't spend much time on it. So the epic finale okay. may complete on the 9th of September 2022. As we record this, unlikely to get delayed, but... Never, ever, ever say never. Ever. Mm. Obviously, I've got confused there. I've said too much never and never. <laughs> Don't write it off is what I'd say. Number two, we got some European sales data. I did this last mm. month with Logan. Gamesindustry.biz. All right, mm. Every month, this old boy, Christopher Dring, really? he compiles the data for the European markets and it's, you know, I think it's like over a dozen European markets. Digital plus physical sales. It's units, not cash, money, monetary value. Uh, the only thing that's excluded, and this is across nearly every tracking site or every data set you get, is Nintendo do not include their digital sales. So it's actually even more impressive when you, when you read off exactly yeah. what's happened. Um, so number one for July, so we're looking at July stuff, was F1 2022. Wow. And that was number one in June as well. Oh, cool. So it's doubled up. Like number two was Grand Theft Auto 5. So that's back up there. Number yeah. three, FIFA 22. Number four, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. Mm. Number five, Red Dead Redemption 2, Rockstar doubling up. Number cool. six and seven, a couple of Nintendo jobbies in Switch Sports and Xenoblade Chronicles, which made its debut. Number eight, to complete the hat trick for Nintendo, Mario Strikers Battle League. Number nine for the quad, which Liverpool couldn't do. Mario <laughs> Kart 8 Deluxe. And then number 10, rounding it out, is NBA 2K22. It does go all the way to 20, but I don't like to go lower than 10. So what I did is I noticed they've, they've started doing this. And I was like, oh, I'll bring it up every month. This is a little, you know, have to yeah. go mental into it. And then I look back in, in Games Industry Drop Business Archive, and they've actually got data from all the way back going to February. So you've got February through to July at the moment. So I created what I call the European Game Sales Power Rankings, fueled by <laughs> GamesIndustry.biz. And essentially what I've done is I've picked out all the top 10s from each of the months, and whoever's number one gets 10 points, whoever's number oh. nine gets nine points, blah, 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 down to one. So that's how you earn your mm. points. And just strung together the data and come up with a little league table. Like, a, I love a league table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, here's these power rankings. We'll do the top five. Feb to July, you said. This is Feb to July oh, inclusive. Well, then. We, we can do the top ten, actually. So, number one is FIFA 22. Yeah. With 49 points. Uh, cool. So, that's obviously been there. Probably would have been there all year because it came out last year and has, has carried through. And it's on a six-month streak of being in the top ten. Cool. So as sure that's as now out. free. Now, when, when did that go? Was on that Game Pass. Was Game oh, yeah, Pass. you're right. And it went on to PlayStation yeah. Plus in yeah. like May. That's a good point, actually. <laughs> How's it still selling? It that just proves is... these people 
aren't just... involved in these subscription services. No. They're not. No. It's clear as day there. That's oh, a really good point, cool. actually. See, look. It's, look at this good stuff. Grand Theft <laughs> Auto Five number two with a score of yeah. 41. That's also on a six-month streak, so that's laughing. Mm. Elden Ring at number three. Wow. Hauled in a massive 36 points. And actually, July was the first time it hadn't been in the top 10. So oh. it fell out for the first time. It's on a five-month streak because of that. Where are we up, Where are we up to? Number four, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker really? Saga. So that's trending to do very yeah, well. Four-month streak for those boys and girls. I didn't think that they sold very well, them Lego games. Mate. Man. Clearly wrong. Well, this is why I like to do it, because I think we have all these preconceived mm. notions. We're like, wow, oh, bloody kids' games, they don't sell. Yeah. But it kind of grounds us, and we're like, well, they clearly oh. are somewhere. Yeah. Uh, where are I? One, two, three, four. Number five, Nintendo Switch Sports. Again... Digital one. is he not included in it's that. It's not included, so yeah, if that's top five, of cool. course. Could be higher. Could be higher. Uh, number six is Horizon Forbidden West, which everyone seems to hate for some reason. <laughs> um, number seven is, is, is F1 2022, so it's only been in there two months, but two back-to-back Whoa, titles back-to-back. has cracked it in there. Really done it. Where are we? I've completely lost count. Number eight, Gran eight, Turismo. Yeah. Another one, yeah. Number nine, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Again, Pokemon still selling. Missing that digital. Again, could, yeah, digital could be higher. And then number ten to round out the power rankings is Red Dead Redemption Two. So that's yeah. I think so. When's that? I suppose that's still got this. I get GTA because it's mm. online is such a big thing. I know. I suppose Red Dead is, but. I don't ever compare it to... Red Dead's only been in the top 10 for the last three months. So it wasn't there February, March right. or April. And it's, mm. so it's sitting on a nice sort of three-month streak now. But yeah. It's dropped in price or something. But Yeah. And I mean, Hor- Horizon Forbidden West also, that was on a five-month streak before coming into July. That mm. dropped out. But that's the top 10. It just feels like that just, it's useful because we get, yeah, so, we get so caught up in our own bollocks about hardcore yeah. infuses games that... Oh, like, well, what about the American sales? We ain't American. <laughs> Not We're doing the Europe. It's the mate. biggest market. Well, let's look at our market because look, FIFA's top. Yeah. Makes more sense. FIFA and F1, popular sports on these aisles, and they're doing well. Yeah. In this market. In this market. Number three. They get Madden, don't they? they, they yeah, that's the thing. Well, that's what's interesting is things like Madden and NBA yeah. very rarely chart in the European sales. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, wow. that's definitely uh, the insight that I've looked at. The NBL's up there quite a bit as well, isn't it? NHL? NB- which uh, one? Oh, NHL. Uh, no, M- MLB? MLB. MLB the sh- that- yeah, that, Sorry, uh, interestingly, that is not that is not charted. Not? No. Cool. Again, we don't. who plays no. it over here? Exactly, yeah. You ain't getting no one here. Baseball, some cricket, fucking, mate. Some fucking, yeah, well, no cricket <laughs> games either. Let's have a look at oh. like, stuff that's charted but not made the power rankings. So Kirby's been in a few times. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dying Light made it for uh, one month. Oh. Uh, NBA, WWE, Warhammer 3, Total War, that is. Uh, the Quarry was in for a month. Good. XCOM, funnily enough, XCOM 2 was, oh, in, wow. a, was in on February, at number Good. nine. And then F one F one twenty twenty one was in March's sales because the new season started. Oh, oh so people right, were yeah. jumping in on that, and uh, yeah. yeah, Tiny Tina's Wonderland also made the top ten in March as well. But there's some data, data for people to data. to digest. Thank you, GamesIndustry.biz. <laughs> they do good work. Yeah. They, have to, they have to pay for all that access. Cool. So I had a look. I was like, oh, I can get all this myself, and I was like, oh. You Got to apply, and I was like, you know what, these guys are doing it. <laughs> I'll, yeah, just, yeah. I'll just nick it, credit them, and then put my own <laughs> okay. spin on it. Number three, Evo took place this past week. Now, is that the first time in two years, or did they do it online? You got your they, really yeah, it's the first one in person. Was, in person, yeah, first one Sony. True, since they well. became majority. Acquired. Um, oh, yeah, I haven't watched it for a couple of years, I think. So, yeah, it must be, yeah. Yeah, probably the first one since um, COVID. COVID, yeah. Called? Yeah. Interesting. Um, so, you didn't watch yeah. the fighting. Um, I didn't wa- I didn't watch the fighting, no. Well, no Did shame in that, because I didn't realise it didn't finish till about 4am over here. Yeah. Like, it yeah, runs so well late. 
But there were, yeah. as I understand, some trailers and bits and pieces, some, some reveals. What What mm. did you pick out of, of anything of interest? That because I'm completely disconnected from fighting. I feel like I don't play oh, anything, yeah. do I? I don't, I don't play multiplayer. I don't play fighting games. No. Well, but, I'm always, I, and I probably still will. I always buy the big three mm. for me: Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, and Tekken. Um. And. Uh, so yeah, um, and then I, I do end up buying them, but I, I've mentioned on this pod before how I'm sick of now these fucking fighter pies, fighter packs, and they have these seasons now with more, and then they re- end up releasing a bloody another version of the game, like an yeah. arcade edition with it all. So they just get on my tits. To they go, we're not doing that this time. Yeah, <laughs> they even yeah the fella from bloody Street Fighter said it, and then they're done. Um, and then when I saw the Street Fighter 6, I was like, oh, it looks not really my bag. But to be fair, everything I've seen since, is I'm like, oh, am I going to buy it again? Of course I'm going to fucking buy it again. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I stick with the big three. But yes, there was a little trailer that was basically just like a... I thought it was like a PS5 update for Tekken 7, but mm. it wasn't. It's just basically an update... Um, I think it's just like in a season's update or yeah, something like that. Yeah, adding some more bits, weren't they? Bits and pieces, some new moves or something. And they teased something. And then, yeah, just like they didn't announce any, like didn't put anything in the name of the trade or anything. It just said sort of watch to the end. And, yeah, it was a um, recreation of the ending of Tekken 1 when you complete the arcade <laughs> mode with my boy Kazua. Yep. Um, it was his ending, and then it just flashed to a a very good looking updated version of Kazuya. So he still had that silly smirk on his face. He had that <laughs> smirk in his red eye, and yeah, said, "Get ready." Mm. With a hinted hint hint to Tekken Eight, which so definitely you think going to be Tekken Eight and not some sort well, of revival of Tekken Tag or they, they, well, these are the the three option is Tekken Eight, yeah, Tekken Tag Three, yeah. Or a remake of one. Cool. Remake it for me. I'll get remake involved. One. So complete full ground ground up remake with all new endings or whatever. Um, same carrying on that storyline because sto- like the, the endings do carry on like chronologically. There is like an overarching story that's carried on, mm. um, and they're going to stick to the source material and just maybe just like expand it a bit. Apparently. Ooh. So yeah. So there's no news on that, but yeah. He was there, Harada, the creator. And yeah, just that's all we got was that one split second. So looks like it's on its way, but no actual announcement. No. Or thing. It's just all speculation, but we do know there is something in the works. Lovely. So I don't really know what I'd... I, I want all three, to be fair. Tekken... <laughs> I feel I haven't really played a Platinum Tekken 7. <laughs> it's really easy. It's like... Okay. It was done in like 10 hours um, and sort of played it for a bit and then sort of just went off of it because it, it's very online orientated. Same with seven, um, Street Fighter Five, really as well. That was very much online. That weren't too much. They added the campaign on a bit later down the line. Yeah. Come out to very little thing. Now it's fucking thriving. You know, there's been updates. There's fucking four or five different iterations. You've got fucking eight fighter packs. Buy them now, you're right. So I always say this: I'm never going to buy them on launch, but they come out and I get sucked into that hype. <laughs> so yeah, so that really grabbed the bollards. Tekken, um, and then there was a f- and some new character. Well, I say new, well, one new character added to the Street Fighter Six roster. Um, oh yeah, Kimberly, I think her name was some sort of graffiti artist that sort of um, carries oh, on. It's illegal to do graffiti, so why are we encouraging <laughs> that to the youngsters? That's it. And Come then a on. character, uh, Yuri, who's been in previous ones. I think it was Yuri. Someone like so that. Yeah, Red Alert. Yeah. Yuri's Revenge. <laughs> Yuri's Revenge. So, yeah, we've got a few character announcements. So, it seems to be hotting up now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some, some more gameplay, some level reveals. Yeah. But pretty much, that's all I took for it. I think there's some other... There was another game announced, one of the... Remember they called it one of the real Japanese fighting games, but yeah. I saw them are. making a f- you know they made an announcement that Dragon Ball Fighters is getting Dragon that getting that rollback netcode. I'm not gonna, right. I ain't going to sit here and pretend I 
know what know one percent what that is, but I just know it means that your player experience over the internet is yeah. far improved. It's like far the gold improved. standard. So yeah. that's exciting for that game, which is still going. Still going. Yes. Yeah, I bought that, yeah. and that's probably that's probably the game uh, fighting game I've played a, a bought and played the least. Mm. <laughs> that's unfortunate. So I have, yeah, I've really have gone on. A, I'm on a downward spiral with fighting games, but like I say, I will always buy those. You know, I think more combat. Or I was trying to think this the other day. Which one did I have first? I must have. One was Street Fighter. That's the one I had on like on the, the Mega Drive. Stairs. Well, yeah. I was a Sega kid in this household. Atari than Sega. I had Street Fighter on a Sega. Hmm. Did you? Yeah. I had. I had and then Tekken what? was like the PlayStation game. I remember yeah, that, that was, that was yeah, like that. the three D and I did the demo. I think I had a demo. Mortal Kombat I kind of knew about but didn't really look mm. into. I played that with Jamie Snell on his <laughs> Mega Drive. <laughs> he would come around and play this fighting game. It's really cool. It was really cool. He wasn't I lying. Down, I was like, oh, what is this? I was like, what? It must have been like 99 or 2000. That yeah. must have been. Whatever it was. But yeah, I was like, cool, get me some of this. Then the film came out. I fucking love that. Um, so yeah, so the big three I'll, I'll always get, so I'm sure I will buy it. But yeah, I've got to say I didn't watch much of the fighting. It's, they are quite, they can be quite exciting. Some of the fights on there, um, you know, if you know what the characters are and how close the fights can be, or just to see how sort of someone that gets absolutely whooped and it's like fucking hell, it's just travelled all that way to go to you, but it's just yeah. been absolutely pwned there you go i found the one i was playing street fighter 2 champion edition was on the mega drive Oh, mega drive yeah oh, I mean, oh, I I the yeah well we had no nintendo johnson had the nintendo so i'd go around there and play lost vikings and oh, run yeah. saber and Mario kart and then i would have the the sega at home oh, and play road rash and stuff road like that West. yeah sonic. road rash 2 sonic yeah <laughs> yeah, Super Mario World round John. Yeah, those were the times. So we didn't have one. I mean, one. I can't think of that now. And I think you lazy bastards' parents should have got every console <laughs> available for me. So I've missed well, that. My, my parents. I'm one of five boys. Yeah. So we, have, right, we could have had a console each, and we'd have been laughing. Trouble is, I I'm almost certain my parents didn't go out and buy that off the. Sh that was a hand me down or bought from a oh, boot sale. It? it can't. I just can't <laughs> imagine them going into Argos yeah. and buying it, but. Well, I think actually, how much were they when they come out? A few hundred quid, like, it would have been. Yeah, I think the Mega Drive was actually Dan's, my brother's. Oh, was it? Because I remember him selling it in the Evening Echo in the classifieds, <laughs> and all these blokes coming round and being like, "Oh, I'll give you a tenner for right." And I was like, "Because it weren't mine." I was a bit sad <laughs> yeah. seeing not like, the game. Yeah, yeah, going. yeah. Oh, no, not gold and X. That's when I think I got the Amiga <laughs> five hundred in my room, so I sort of went backwards right. and God, sat in we'll there. Take it back. Yeah, Start but from the beginning. But no, they are they are, they are the classic three, aren't they? Yeah, the, the classic three. What? Which one weren't that? Was it more? No, one of them weren't there either. I remember there was a bigger mission. Was it Smash? Smash wasn't there, no, because Smash. I think because Sony are now oh, majority cool. stakeholder, yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. want to Get play that. that game. Yeah, I don't even think Sony did. I think Nintendo went nah. Oh really? We're gonna do our own thing, and I was like, okay. Yeah, multiverses will be there next week, next year. I was gonna say, well, we're getting shitloads of fighting games. I mean, we've got multiverse. Um, what was it? Rumbleverse or something yeah. as well? Some Rumble something or other. They're all popping out the woodwork. All popping out, but yeah, I would like to watch more Eva. I just completely forgot it was on, and it's on yeah. really late over here. But yeah, it's very shitly. That's not a word. Uh, badly. <laughs> um, promoted yeah yeah a lot of people said that know, it's you know they said they're not in we have these fucking echo chambers where, bubbles you know bubbles of you everything's fucking tailored to you and algorithms and yeah. stuff but fighting games this should be in mind because yeah. you know but I, know, I didn't know it was until you said about it and nah. I, I started seeing the trailers and i was like right Get me and then you went did you watch that and i thought Oh, no chance. Out of the loop, mate. <laughs> nah. Well, I, cert I certainly wasn't going to watch <laughs> watch the trailers, but yeah. little little Evo round up there. So the THQ Nordic 2022 digital showcase has pretty much ended not very long ago. We didn't actually tune in live to it. We had it on in the background and um, seen that the last part of it. I saw the opening before we started recording, which was the reveal of Alone in the Dark being remade and also reimagined they kind of use that word so it's more like a resident evil 2 where it's not gonna 
look exactly Ooh. like the old game. Um, being developed by... Where's they gone? Pieces Interactive. Their past games are Titan Quest Ragnarok, Titan Quest Atlantis, and Magicka 2. So pedigree, in my view, lacking there. But that's an interesting thing to sort of pull from the past and go through. Other things in there, I mean, that we we finally saw the AW Fight Forever gameplay reveal. This was leaked a few weeks ago. Mm. Um, this looked okay, but mm. I'm hoping it plays well. That's the main thing because it's going to have to be. Cause, yeah. And I'm a bit. I'm one of those people that likes to like simulate and watch, like set up a season and watch things. Out. Yeah, that's not going to be this game. This is going to have to. This is not going to have any of that. So it no, needs to play true. well. But that had a bit of a lukewarm reception. I don't know what you've your thoughts on AEW. Yes, it's it like they're definitely um, going balls in with the arcade approach, mm. especially with these sort of little mini games. I hope it's not they're not going to go down too much of like a battlegrounds. <laughs> yeah, that, that that sort of road, um, that thing. But what I do like of what I've seen is it has a No Mercy slash WrestleMania 2000 mm. vibe, where it's got that sort of cartoony graphics. Well, they got the director sort of... of No Mercy to come onto this project. So, oh really? Um... Of course, it's got that thing. Hopefully, and I did it comes really out that enjoy. way. I used to love being able to just create new wrestlers on there. Yeah. We were always getting this expanded AEW roster. Yeah. Every time they buy a new company. But yeah, it's definitely got some some things. Yeah, it's it's hard because you're getting the, the wrestling, the WWE games, and they're, they're going for that super realism. And yeah. That super sort of simulation yeah. vibe. When you see the arcade version, it's makes it almost look a bit sort of phony sort of it yeah there is definitely that sort of wash on it i totally yeah. agree even just the presentation the way it kind of is full put put together but hope if it plays well i mean look it's, there's no if it if it's great wrestling to be had you know moment to moment gameplay all can sort of be forgotten and forgiven there's some weird stuff in there like there's the mini games in there <laughs> and I'm like, i don't so quite right. understand what they're playing at but I'm su- i thought they were going to have a release date during this thing because they were sort of started to release a bit more information there was like the like i said this leaked a couple of weeks ago and i thought well maybe there'll be a release date had rumored to be september but surely now that's that's passed so all the pages mm. have gone up on the platform so you can find it you can wish list it on playstation store and xbox and steam and whatnot but it's just no date or, or price just okay. yet so that will be key um spongebox square pants cosmic shake was there we saw recreation which is an open world arcade racing game Outcast 2, Gothic 1 remake, and that was basically it. They did tease that they've still got 25 games to announce and that one of them might just be a South Park project. So we'll be waiting with bated breath, but there you go. THQ Nordic 2022 Digital Showcase. Ooh, it's weird, weird timing for it. Just before Gamescom, yeah. trying to sneak in, aren't oh, they? Gamescom cool. season officially kicked off, and there we go. Cool, lovely. With a bang. We're going to close this segment off with um, a voice note from Biff. He oh. played through recently Stray on PlayStation oh. Plus Extra, and Do you like, know what go on. I see him playing the weirdest, most. Unbiff game ever. I was like, where is he playing that? And I thought it was going to be that. I see him playing something like Hyperlight Drifter or something. Really? Yeah, it's because like, he's on that, he's got that extra still running, that sub. I think he's just right. trying stuff. I'll have to right, ask him if I he's going to start doing I was like, what is Biff playing that? That's yeah, insane. That is not a Biff game. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway. Well, we're about to find out whether Stray was, and it's literally like a, you know, 35 second clip. We're just, right. I, think, I know. He used to have two dogs. Yeah. Does he like cats? <laughs> Good question. I don't know, actually. He's not said, but he seems... I've got mates that got dogs, and they hate cats. Yeah. I have got, I've got a dog, as, as people know. But I don't hate cats. I'm don't pro cats. or animal. I don't think Biff hates cats. I don't think he's... Right. Unless they shit in his garden. I think then he gets the ump. It's not his. <laughs> but yeah. here's Biff's right. little mini review of Stray. So have I got the volume up? Probably not. Yeah, decent. I really like the uh, Stray. Uh, good setting. I like the gameplay. Not too long, not too short. 
fact it didn't cost me a penny I know it's part of that thing so it does technically cost me but you know for the game it was I've, I've paid 50 60 quid for a game that was worse than that and, uh, no man's sky springs to mind but yeah I was well impressed with it I thought it was really really good and I really liked the setting and I don't know I didn't think I would but yeah it's quality uh, probably give that a gold just because it was free and uh, yeah just enjoyed it I like the little robots and the way the cat integrated with them I thought it was quite clever so yep there you go. <laughs> wow. Did not expect that in the slightest. When you said he played straight, I was expecting a pointless. Yeah, yeah. Hammering a, a pointless. I don't get what's going on. You're a cat. It's shit. I binned it after 10 minutes. Well, it's <laughs> interesting what he said there, that because it was, he kept saying free. So clearly yeah. the, the subscription like marketing Logic. does does play into, I mean, we've, we've spoken about this before. He kept saying free, then trying to correct himself, but that <laughs> that clearly made he felt like that was a really good deal because it was Ooh. including something he'd already paid for, which is it's an interesting. Yeah. Um, he did play through to completion as well. Yeah, finished it. Credits so, were rolled. Wow! You, and you, you've done it as well. Yeah, you? I've done it. Gave it a lovely old silver, I think. I can't remember now. Ooh. So, but Biff chucking out the golds. Loved it. Oh, goes for it. Absolute cat man. He's going to get himself a cat now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I did not expect that Anne, in the slightest. I didn't either. I would have said, just looking at it, I've yet to play it, but I certainly would say that is not a Biff game. No, but and maybe... Go, I'll eat my pie. He clearly can't be anti-cat if he's given it, given no, it, given no. it that sort of score. Yeah. Unbelievable. Right, we're going to transition out for this week and hand over to some game impressions. Atkins, I'm thinking of giving people the Elden Ring versus Horizon Forbidden West chat we did. Oh, it's yeah. quite meaty, but it will take the episode up to just about an hour and a half, which is like where, what we aim for yeah. as, a, as a maximum. Now, I remember being pretty drilled by this point. I don't know if you were drinking that night. I don't, I, I don't think I was. No. I, was, I think you were getting but it was, more drunk. It was late. We'd been in there yeah. for about four hours just pumping out uh, impressions. Yeah, it started at eight, didn't we? And I think yeah. we finished about one. Yeah. <laughs> and this was the last one, I think. And I was absolutely mm. caned and smoked by this point. But we tried yeah. to set up an Elden Ring versus Horizon Forbidden West sort of chat. And really, we speak about 50 minutes on Elden Ring and about two on <laughs> Horizon Forbidden West, <laughs> pretty much simulating exactly what happened to Horizon Forbidden West. And let's be fair, Horizon Forbidden West had plenty of chats. They had a three-hour yeah. spoiler cast. I babbled for it for about an hour, so no arm, no yeah. foul. But I'm going to chuck that at the end for the, the guys okay. and girls at home. So we will see you on the other side. <laughs> Here we are then, back with some gaming and impressions to close out this week's Idle Game Chat. You've got the Governors of Gaming, Apps and Adkins here, the original gaming click. We're here to talk about two games in particular. So we're doing something a little bit different because there is... I mean, it's just accepted that one of these games came along after the other and stole its thunder. <laughs> so we want to try to kind of explore that in this mm. in this little ending piece for Idle Game Chat. And the two games we're talking about is Elden Ring and Horizon Forbidden West, which came out a week apart earlier on this year. And Elden Ring, it, you know, there's no denying it, came out after for Horizon Forbidden West, sucked the oxygen out of the room and dominated not just Horizon Forbidden West's little space, but gaming space in general. Last I looked, they were basically going to hit 14 million sales, which is f far and away their most successful. It's probably gone over that by the time this is aired. Like far yeah. and far in excess, their most successful from software game ever made. And it's unfortunate in some ways for Horizon because it's happened twice. Because we had Zelda Breath of the Wild the second coming of video games that came along in 2017 and then the third coming in 2022, which was Elden Ring, came along and, and slapped the taste out of its mouth. So we're going to... not going to directly compare them, but I think it'd be interesting to have the conversation in one go just Definitely. to see how that happened. And we're going to start in reverse because I feel like... Well, for one reason, you finished Horizon after finishing Elden Ring. So yes. you were playing Horizon 
and then stopped <laughs> and went to Elden Ring. So that's that's yeah. important. And, you know, Elden Ring was the big talking point. So I feel like yeah. we should start there. Now, a lot of you would have heard Adcock's full hour-long discussion we've had. Um, I don't know if we're going to go that deeply into it, but we'll, we'll talk about it and try and condense it and have it sit alongside Horizon Forbidden West. But you've not heard my overall opinion on it as well. I've played through it. I don't know if I even said I was playing, actually, on the podcast, but I played through it. Mm. Got to the credits, you know, which is what we, what I like to do. Yeah. Now, did I miss sixty percent of the game? Well, not six. Did I miss thirty oh, percent of the game? I yeah. feel like maybe I, you know, I got forty-eight percent of the trophies. Um, it wasn't a bad run. It's kind of like one of those oh. things where it is what it is. Um, yeah. It'd be interesting, but Atkins. Let's just talk through the mindset of starting Horizon Forbidden West and then <laughs> and then not not you know, not doing what everyone's doing, going, Oh, day one Elden Ring, I'm gonna go and play that. Yeah. Cause you no. was resolute. You stood there and went, No, I'm gonna I'm not I'm not falling for the bait. Nah. A good I two, think. three weeks and then the crumble happened and <laughs> the crumbled <laughs> And that was it. it for It really did. So yeah, I Herman Holt's fuming at this. I was I was so up for Horizon when it came out. I was so up for Horizon. And yeah. Started it and was quickly soured by this and it was You this, said, this... quote, four out of ten. <laughs> For Horizon, yeah, that's what was being that's what oh. was being touted about before say, and yeah, during the Elden Ring playthrough. Mm. <laughs> it was, it was. It was. I was playing Horizon, and I had that. Do you know when you get that little devil and the little angel? Mm. I, I literally had them on my shoulders as I was playing Horizon. I was playing Horizon, and one was going, "Skip this cutscene. You don't care about this game." <laughs> get to the ring. I was going, "What?" He's going, skip it, you don't want you to know this. All right, skip it. <laughs> and there's someone going, you want to be playing that Horizon. You want to be playing Elden Ring, didn't you? And I was going, no, no, I, I bought this game. I said I'm not buying Elden Ring. I'm going to play Horizon. I'm going to finish it then. I'm going to stitch it. And then maybe later on, I think, oh, no, you don't want to do that, do you? No. <laughs> Go on, what, watch someone else play it online then. And it was, it, I just had this niggle constantly just it whilst i was playing it i was just all like i was playing the game thinking about like elden ring i was like where's my horse <laughs> <laughs> i was like where's my horse gone in this game Dang, a horse you got it, a velociraptor you can ride <laughs> exactly yeah, it was ridiculous and it was i'll be go, i'll be playing um horizon i was enjoying it at first and you know, I was like, oh, this is more of the same. It's, this is fun. Yeah. And then I'll be going to, and then I'll stop playing a game and I'll, I'll have to look after the kids and stuff. And then I'll stick YouTube on and everything will be top tips of Elden how Ring, to play Elden yeah, Ring. Yeah. Streamers playing Elden Ring. And then I'll, I'll just find myself going, well, if I'm not going to buy it, I'll just watch it. And I was just sat there watching it for hours on end, mm. just going, this is fucking, this looks the tits. I, want, I just love watching people play. It's such a good streaming game just to watch people suffer and yeah. just sort of work it out. And then this carried on for about, I don't know, a week, two weeks max, if that. Mm. And then it, I went round Clarkie's and Clarkie was the Clarkie, opposite. what are you doing, mate? It's Clarkie's fault. Clarkie He's bought... Lord from Software, isn't he? He loves these games. Li yeah, yeah, he loves them games. He bought Elden Ring and didn't have any... I don't think he has still bought Horizon. I yeah. don't know if he completed the first one. But yeah, he was all in. So then went round his and he was obviously playing it. It was like, oh, have a go. So I started to play it and that was it. I was like... Right, that's it. That night, I came back from his and went straight on Amazon and bought yeah. Elden Ring. <laughs> and the only From Software game before this was Sekiro that you played through from start to finish. You try, <laughs> yeah. tried Bloodborne, tried try Demon Blood Souls. Born. Tried Demon Souls, got stuck on both. Mm. Well, not stuck. Just say, just give up. <laughs> just babied it, really. The trouble with those games, you're, you, we've spoken about this many times, but you're the the... the, the the technique or the tactic of playing something for two, three, four weeks and then walking away and coming back to it. Mm. In many, many games, most, you can get away with. But yeah, I don't think it was from software stuff, you need to be nah. sharp. Um, you, can, you can work your way back into it after a month off. But you'll mm. spend 
a good few sessions just getting acclimatized again and getting all your timing yeah, down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Shit. Yeah. Exactly that. But no, so that happened. I purchased Elden Ring, and then that was it. And amazingly, for a game this scope and size, oh, got it. I yeah. got it. He's his got it. It's blue. Oh, my that, coffee. That is unbelievable. I stuck with it and. It took me fucking ages as well. Like yeah, I was playing it for almost two months. I think I was playing it for. Was it? We worked out. Yeah. It was something crazy, but like most people were. Yeah, yeah, but not. But that's typically not how I play games. I do have this weird way of playing them for a little bit, going on to something else, and then coming back and finishing it months down the line, unless it's something like an Elden. Uh, uh, last of us or where well, i want to get to the end so was it um, was it that you enjoyed elden ring that much that you wanted to stay with it or was it also the fear of if i stop playing this i'm going to be it, i'm going to be in trouble coming back to this like, i don't want to get to yeah x was, part of it and come back to a hard bit and be like bloody Nora. yeah i think well because i see uh, whilst i was playing it i was also in conversation with jordan who yeah. also bought it the same day, or I think he bought it the day before me, and he started it and was starting to tell me his progress, and I was like, right, that's it, I've got to get involved with this. <laughs> um, and then I see him drop it, and he still hasn't gone back to it, right. so he's he's living the disaster. What could, I had that in my back of my mind, I like, remember thinking, well, that's not I can't pick, I can't have that with this one. I've got to see it through. Because Sekiro, you did. In a stint, yeah, or like, it, in, yeah, it was it, two, it, three it was, week, like it powerhouse. Was a of weeks, yeah, I really did power through that, and I think that again, I had Biff on my side on that one. Mm. We were both playing through it together. I think he started before me, yeah, um, and we were sort of talking, discussing tactics and how to get past certain bits and bobs. So I do Gee. think these, this this type of yeah, this type of game, it definitely does help to discuss with other people. And right. give knowledge, much to your demise. Well, not to your demise because you got through it. But well, look, um, I didn't. I didn't talk to anyone. I knew stuff because you can't. You couldn't avoid it for those. Nah, but I, no. I had no idea what I was doing. I'd know. I just let whatever was in the game told me. I didn't look up any how-to guides. I didn't look up any starter guides. All I did was go on no. Bando Namkai's website, and it had like a synopsis of the plot. Then it had controls, and it had some starting tips. And it linked to a video that they, I don't think they actually made themselves, but they put on their official channel. And I watched those and then that was it. I was left to my own devices. Mm. And considering I'd, Bloodborne's the only other game I've played and finished from, from software, this was, i just pick my words carefully because you get it wrong. You get crucified by these from software <laughs> fucks. This felt more straightforward in that i knew where to go yeah. and what to do and which is mad yeah. considering it's an open world game because you think well you're yeah. gonna get lost but actually the kind mm. of like the milestone points are quite clearly communicated yeah. yeah yeah um and all you've got to really do if you're you don't want we say it does put markers on your fucking map we yeah, are, found this does. out so this this whole yeah. bullshit that there's no there's no quest no markers point. is a lie because that, that <laughs> yeah. absolutely does and the same with breath of the wild i don't know where that that came from because i'm playing that again now there's quest markers mm. everywhere it fucking tells you mm. but what i found with bloodborne was that sometimes i was standing i don't even know where to go where, mm. but i always kind of knew where i needed to go on this one but i was choosing to do something else to level up to get a weapon or just for my own you know, exploration to go through it. Mm. So what, but what happened was, and I got later in the game, because I hadn't done any research on builds, on mm. really mm. understanding the weapon scaling and how that mm. affects your build, really understanding that actually you can't really build a well-rounded character that's made for, later game and not realizing that actually the vitality is quite important in this one because you can't avoid everything yeah. i was it just i had the like one of the i imagine if i sent this to a purist when there's my build how i finished it they'll be like that is that is so bad because i was like level on everything basically like mm. 20 or 30 in all of it yeah. whereas what you need to have is a high vitality and then pick like strength pick, and and it, then yeah. get a weapon that's got some S or A scaling in strength. What I will say is in the post game, when I actually read up about this stuff afterwards, because the game mm. don't really 
Nah, explain this and I don't know actually if that's the game maybe I sh- from experience I would have known that if I'd played Dark Souls if this is they talk about these games being no hand holding this is the type of game that chops off your hand yeah <laughs> need to there see is some. Fuck, there is a, an essential item mm. at the beginning of this game that you are required to use yeah. and they fucking hide it yeah they hide it in a little tiny dungeon that don't tell you that it's there you could easily miss it I only the, did you could you could easily miss that, and people be like, "Where well, the fuck? What? Yeah. what? It does. It explains it in the way, but not in a contentious sense. It's just like a fucking it's little re- thing. It's really odd. Miss. It's really odd. So I know what you're talking about, and it's the, mm. the whetstone. I'm assuming whetstone. That's yeah. It, so yeah. what the whetstone allows you to do is to change, like, put these things called ashes of war on your mm. weapons, and you can change like a, a, a magical power of them. But you can also change mm. their scaling. Type, yeah, which is important if you're if you found a weapon you really like and your builds all focus around strength, but it's set to dex. If you can get yeah. the right ashes of war, you can change that and work it in your favor. That's really important. Also, what's important is the sacred flask um, mixer yeah. that you can get. Yeah, now that you can find because the merchant you can buy a what they call like a knowledge. No. Oh, right. And it will say, and it won't tell you where it is. It will say it's on the third church on the western side. So why that whetstone wasn't part of that, I don't don't know. Maybe maybe it was. Again, maybe it was written down somewhere. But this this is what I was kind of dealing with because I had no... (laughs) I'm assuming you knew where to go to get the starter stuff and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. This is the trouble. I didn't look up any guides to say sort of, you know, where to go or how to do a bit. I didn't follow any type of guide however i did not go in completely blind because i'd watched so many and i'd watch streamers start from the beginning do like the and do so i I, they were showing me what i was essentially watching a guy because i was watching someone else play it (laughs) yeah just wasn't i didn't type in like elden ring guide i was just watching someone else so i was picking up all this knowledge and like i say i had two friends that were playing it at the same time as me so we're constantly on whatsapp in go here, go here, and oh, what have you got? Yeah. So I did have help and wasn't going in blind. But yeah, I can, yeah, when you were telling me the way you were doing it, I was just like, that. that's basically a hard mode. <laughs> oh, the other thing I did, which was stupid, was start as a wretch. Yeah. So I started on level, so, I think you start on level one. one? Or zero. Yeah, because I think most of the others start on like f- between five and ten. Yeah, I think 10. I was about 13. I oh, yeah, yeah, they go, they go as high as that. So I start on level one. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, this is the mistake I made because had I chose, oh, fuck, astrologer, high in magic, etc. Do you know what I'd have done? I'd have built my character with the with with the stats that were higher to start with. I'd yeah. just naturally done that. But because the yeah. wretch was all baselined, I just <laughs> over time I wasn't planning to, but I just naturally was doing that. Mm. So I was stuffed. The last sort of quarter of the game, I was. I was getting one-shotted by most bosses. Oh. So I had to be summoning. Yeah. Mm. I had to. Yeah. I, I know people were like, you can't summon. I was like, no, I need some yeah. fucking... I need me the option to I, do it. I was treating it like Monster Hunter. Yeah. yeah where yeah. you summon someone that you don't know in, they come in, they help mm. or they hinder, and at the end yeah. you bow to them and they say goodbye, and you kind of had that... That little relationship for that that ten minutes for the boss, and it feels like a good thing, and that's what yeah. I ended up doing towards the back end of the game more and more and more, is because yeah. I didn't realise how badly made my character was until afterwards when I read into mm. the detail, and that's I don't know if it's necessarily, well, it kind of is, it should be in the game, but had I been more experienced with the other games, I'd have understood the scaling and how important the build is, to be honest. I hadn't really considered that. I don't remember doing that in Bloodborne where well, I no, no. where I summoned very little, but I had more help from online sources like a Facebook group, yeah. for example. Yeah, yeah. This felt like actually the build aspect was quite important to get reasonably right mm. to give you a, a solid foundation to sort of go on and tackle the game. Yeah. But yeah, no. I'll digress. No, um, yeah. No, I, I, sum- I summoned a fair bit to be fair, um, on some challenging bits. What? Fucking Alexa started kicking off <laughs> talking to me all of a sudden. Elden cow. Ring ninety seven. <laughs> um, what I did, which 
I spoke. Shut <laughs> up. Yeah. Alexa, stop. I stopped everyone's Alexas <laughs> on the stream. <laughs> um, right. Anyway, I was rudely interrupted. Um, yes. Yeah, so I I did uh, do a fair bit of summoning in some some of the harder bosses and stuff. Um, but what I did is I used. I had the you know the summon that you have with you the yeah um, I don't know they call them ashes ash yeah what annoys me they got the same name I was like why do you call them spirits <laughs> exactly uh, yeah that'd have been perfect yeah but I had one that was a, it was called the mimic tier where it was just a carbon copy of me yeah I've heard <laughs> I about like, that and basically an every absolute... every guide I read was like get the mimic tier. Uh, Mimic tier is an absolute easy mode. It's yeah. fucking brilliant, and it just devastated. So it was Andy. So, um, but yeah, that's. I never found yeah, the Mimic so tier. I never even got. I never even found one no, anywhere. Yeah. He, was like, he was again hidden. He was in like some. Oh, he was in fucking some. some yeah, I mean, yeah. village or whatever. There is so much of this game that's missable. Yeah, for I miss parts of this game, and I, I'm. Almost got the platinum. Yeah, <laughs> I really tried to kill as much as I could. Yeah, but no. Um, yeah, so played it like that. Um, and yeah, I was hook, line, and sinker into this. Um, let's get the story out of the way. I, I had no idea what was going on in the story. I know, like, I got the general thing. They, you needed an elder. They, there was an elder lord. Yeah, the ring smashed up. Blah blah blah. But I know they brought in. Um, George, George R. R. Martin. Yeah, he was to like the world building. I understand is what he was doing. Like yeah. you know, there are there is story beats in here for Pete the fucking the hounds, you know, the, elite, the hounds, the elitists that are gonna read every single bit of lore yeah, of every ties back item. to Dark Souls. Look at this difference. <laughs> there is, isn't there? There's Patches, did you cuss come in? Yeah, I came across oh, old <laughs> Patches. He's knocking around that little prick. <laughs> he is. But yeah, um, yeah. story for me, that's it. I, I, I accept these games now. That Although saying that, I quite enjoyed the story of Sekiro. Hmm. But I know that, that that isn't what these games are renowned for. It is this fucking loop of serotonin that you get <laughs> <laughs> from grinding and fucking grafting to get this big blob monster fucking dead. Yeah. Um, to then level up and start the battle all over again. And now I, from day dot, like I say, I, I typically drop games and come back, but this had me, I just immersed myself in this world and just locked everything in. Mm. It was just, I tried to play it as much as, like they say, the, the no guide that... From going from Horizon, that was this open world, full of, you know, question marks yeah. and waypoints and stuff, to this sort of just going. To, I, was, I I played it in area. I I looked and seen what areas there were, and was like, right, I'm going to stick to this, and in my head, I'm going to get to a certain level and stay here yes. until I feel comfortable enough to move on to the next area. And that's typically how I played it. I sort of tried to clear it down as much as I could, as much as much as there is no clear down, because it doesn't tell you what the fuck no. you've done, which is to a fault, in my opinion. I think this game, just this little tiny quality of life improvements that this game could benefit from just having. I've got, I've got loads. <laughs> yeah, there's, there are fucking hundreds that I would, but the elitist would be going, well, that's the whole point of the game. It's not supposed to help you. Yeah, it's not supposed to give you quest markers, but it does. And people have <laughs> yeah. lied to about that. So, <laughs> exactly it, that. Like, in general, like, I think this is a mm. this is a great game, but mm. there are there were definitely... <clears throat> Look, I'll, you'll see at the end that I, I'm clearly positive from this game, but there's yes. lots of little things little that needle. it was almost Nickel. like a little like a death over a thousand cuts almost. Right, yeah. Because yeah. over time, it was just irritating towards me, and I was like, "You could." There's so this has already been fixed so many times in other games. Mm. I mean, look, let's get the other the, the big blower. I mean, the story I thought was fine. Like, I kind of. High level, under, at least understood what the hell was going on. Mm. Bloodborne, I know. I, I was like, what, uh, what, 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 what is this? This one, I was like, go get the ring. Yeah. All right, yeah. all right, okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. And yeah. whatever happens, happens. 
and other things you There's can do. There's characters in this that are quite interesting with their quests. Oh, that's another conversation for later, but the quests. <laughs> but go on, get well, the look, big one. So, <laughs> look, it runs like a shit house. Absolute there's, dog shit. There's no other way around it. Like, I, <laughs> and he... No, I don't mean... To, it looks like a last gen game to me. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look it just doesn't look like a well, obviously it's running on Xbox One and, and PlayStation Four. It looks like a PlayStation Four Xbox One game. Um The, the trouble was is seeing how good Demon Souls look. Yeah. I mean that is going and look, I, un- that I understand is... the scope differences and that one was remade, but yeah. to not I'm talking consoles here for now, and then I'll get onto the PC because I played that for a little bit as well, and that was just a horrendous. I couldn't believe it. But to not have a mode on the consoles where it ran at sixty consistently enough, where even VRR on the PlayStation Five wouldn't save it all the time, no, because it dropped below that, it was still stuttering. Is is I just don't think it's good enough, really, because nah. and yet yeah, we've been spoiled this generation. The bar has been set since the. PS5 and Xbox Series X come out. I think we've been very well treated to technical, solid games that come out and run beautifully. This is this is not one of them. This is like a throwback to older games that, that didn't run very well. And the thing that annoys me is that actually, if you play the PS4 version on your PS5, it runs 60. Mm. So it's not, it's not the game being too big. It's just that, for whatever reason, the modes they've put in the PS5... As we record this, they may have added something else. Who knows? Don't give it enough headroom to consistently hit 60. So it's a technical thumb down from that perspective. Yeah. And if you do look, you do get used to it. Absolutely, yeah. you absolutely do because mm. you, you you. I'll be honest though. For the first 20 hours, it was really bothering me. Mm. I don't mean it got any better. People say it gets better as it goes. I don't mean it did. I just. Got it. Just it's like I've, more I've spent nearly a day playing this game. It's my mind's eventually just going to adjust to it. Yeah. And like I said, I went on the PC version. I thought it was annoying me that much. I was like, I know Akins has let me borrow this, but I might just get it on PC because Salmon's got it on Steam, and we've got a Steam family share thing. I played 25 minutes, and it it hung for five seconds minimum each time, about four times. Oh. Literally would go. <laughs> Come to a grinding halt, nothing, oh. and then it would go really quickly, catching up at what's going on. That's a sick and again, the, they say, "Well, look, the more you play it, the more your PC compiles the shaders, the less that happens." <laughs> well, look, sorry, but I'm not gonna... talking about first impressions. Yeah, I was talking about opening half hour, and it was one of the. Th- I just couldn't believe what I was playing. Yeah. So, it runs like a shit house. Um, I got annoyed at the inventory management, in particular with weapons. Mm. It's all a bit clunky anyway, which is fine. But what really frustrated me was when I'd go into I'm trying to think the example because sometimes it did it and sometimes it didn't. It drove me at the wall. I think it's when you bought went to go and look at buying something from a merchant, it would not tell you what the stats are for that item were compared to the stuff you've got equipped. No. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, no, it says it's 135. I was like, I don't know what my defense is on that. Once you bought it, you can compare and swap things out. Yeah. But that annoyed me. Yeah. That really, that, that frustrated me. Um, you can't end the map when you're in combat. You might think, well, you daft cunt, what are you doing that for? But half the time, I wasn't in combat. It was just the music was playing because yeah. some bats were nearby. And I, yeah. it was like, you can't pause the game. So they've um, gone, like, you can't pause the game. You can. You can go. found that out swiftly. <laughs> yeah. Or they go, well, you, look, you can go into the start menu if you want, but the game still runs and you'll die if you want to die like that. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Why can't I go in the map screen then and make that same mistake? Because yeah. often I was running through stuff and I was like, right, I don't know if I'm going the right way now. And there's people scrabbling after me. So I'd be like, oh, I've got to run somewhere safe. And I'd look, I've gone the other way. <laughs> I've gone the wrong way. Um, you can respect your character. Yeah. But it's a limited resource. Yeah. <laughs> What's that all about? <laughs> Repeat bosses. Cookie. Oh, that was a grievance. A very big grievance. Yep. Uh, if there's people going through trying to 
get 100% run and clear down every single boss. Oh, that right. done, done my fucking head in. I'd... Yeah, well, I that's... got sick of them by the end. Yeah. And there wasn't... There was slight variations. You'd get like a fucking uh, tree that's got fucking... Oh, mate, those, like, like, those fucking uh, trees. You know, trees. What are they called? Um, Avatar trees or something. Avatar like tree. Yeah. What was the fucking scarlet rot? Uh, yeah. Was it, get one with that rot on it. Um, yeah, them fucking cat things, burial mm. watchdog. Oh, the watch oh. keep. Yeah, they're annoying. Um, and the th- thing that repeat bosses is, did the game need to be as big as it needs to be? If that's no. one no, of the, no. if that's one of the consequences, I let other people mm. decide. It's um, this is not really a minus. This is typical of from software games, but <laughs> I ran through so many parts of this game. Particularly in the last quarter, like where it was a dungeon area, I would just—I wouldn't even engage. I'd like try once and think ah, I'll just run past them. <laughs> so this—I don't know if it, people say it's the design of the game. I was like, it probably is, but I just find it weird that you can avoid <laughs> just run through combat. The yeah. horse makes it makes it much easier. All right, that's the thing. I never the trouble with these them going like Bloodborne and. Um... Sekiro and Demon Souls. I just felt there wasn't a time where I felt safe. Mm. You know, unless you uh, like, unless you're talking to a merchant or something. Yeah. But I could I could anyone could come out of anywhere and fucking hit you and you'd be dead and you're like, Oh, I've just lost all that fucking <laughs> shit. On Torrent, I felt like a fucking god. Yeah, you can get it. The worst you? things I'm gonna I'm gonna fall off and get or summon him back and jump around yeah, yeah, yeah. I could yeah. just war around swinging my fucking sword to be fucking... fair the horse mechanics are really good like yes, for, yes. For, the, for the game like they are very good but they make just grabbing items out of really hard areas pretty easy because you just sprint yeah. in there grab it and, and go well, maybe you just die but you've got the item it, it don't matter yeah. at that point that's but, typically what I did you could it come up like again you were lied to that you don't you got you, you could see on the map that it, when it was all greyed out that mm. they had the map fragment That's and I'd yeah. send a little waypoint to it sprint over steam in that go through get Grab it clear the map and you go oh right now I can have a little explore now yeah <laughs> yep. but no the game does need a journal does need a journal indeed, like cause and I, I, that is the biggest gripe for me was how anyone knows what to do on them sites. <laughs> you know, I wrote, I started writing stuff down. I got the uh, document. Go. I, write, I wrote down, and what? I, and then in the end, what I started doing was recording using the PS5's capture, recording the last three minutes of conversation to refer That's... back to what they said, and then just quickly writing down like the highlights of it. But mm. I don't want a journal that tells you where to go, even though it does sometimes. The map. I don't want a journal that explains everything in detail. All I want is a log of conversations. Mm. That's it. Read back, yeah. And you don't have to mark it as a quest. Just if you want to be that ignorant and say, "Well, <laughs> is it a quest or not?" It's like, "Well, does, does it matter?" I don't want to see. I don't need to see a level next to it. I don't need to see XP. I just want all I want is fucking Andrew. He gets brought up a lot. Old Andrew. Andrew said this, <laughs> and then it's just word for word what he said. Just so if I forget in this fucking nearly hundred hour game, I can just refer back to it easily. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I was playing during the time when they put the NPC markers in. Um, I don't know if they were there when you played through it or if they came halfway through. No, they did halfway through. It was quite quick. I think I'd been playing it for about a week. And then yeah. It came. I mean, without them, yeah. I don't know. I, that, that, is, that is absurd because yeah, they, that that's, that's really good. useful. Um, what I have, I'd have things like bosses disappearing and just going back to their starting point when you walk too far yeah, away it's yeah, literally just teleported out uh, catacombs and caves were good but once you've kind of done a dozen I've of them done one, they're you, all the you've same, done them they? all and yeah. that yeah. was my, another bit just one quality of life just tick a, fu- a little tick to say you've done that cave that's uh, all I want I had to start From, marking uh, stuff yeah or if any anything like that just even one Zelda on the shrines the, the shrine changes colour yeah, just that that would have been fine. Subtle. Little colour change, little tick or something to indicate that I'd been there and done that. Mm. Because I'd go, oh, there's one. Oh, no, I've done that one. Oh, there's, oh no, I've done that one. And I just, I just, by the end, I didn't know what I had and what I had. And I was just roaring around trying to find yeah. caves that I hadn't done. No, that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit of a, 
a pain. The last thing, really, is that there's so much stuff hidden in the item descriptions and whatnot. Yeah. When I pick something up, show me what the description is. Yeah. Because the amount of times I pick something up, and I was like, I don't know what that is. It's just a name. And then I had to sieve through three tabs trying to figure out what category of item it was to find the description. It yeah. drove me up the fucking spot. Yeah, I'm playing the, again. I'm playing Breath. The key items? I'm playing Breath of the Wild again. And yeah. when you pick something new up, it brings up a screen with the description. You can skip past yeah. it, but yeah. it doesn't here. So look, no. that was a laundry list of stuff that I I didn't yeah. like. What I will say is that for the vast majority of the game, once I got into it, once I understood. I, I really did enjoy my time of it. It's definitely far from, from perfect, but um, it's just a really... strikes a, a nice balance of... I enjoyed figuring stuff out on my own. I really did enjoy yeah. getting through things without any help. In hindsight, I could have made the game probably more enjoy I could have felt more empowered if I'd yeah. figured stuff out and asked about what should I be building towards etc cetera, etc cetera. but to mm. its credit using just the tools that are in the game i e summoning people from online and using the item descriptions I was able to get through it let's, yeah. let's make no yeah. bones about it I didn't need a guide at the end I just needed no. I just needed help to get through some of the bosses that were just one shot in me and mm -hmm. my ashes were just getting clapped in one shot. <laughs> so in terms of like a from, from software game, I'm going to say accessible because that to me means like yeah. other things, but approachable, mm. this is the one to try at least. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I do wish that there was a, a seamless co-op mode of some sort. Yeah. I'm never, never going to do it, but that would be just so mm -hmm. much fun. I would... It really I would, would. Love just that. being able to roar around wherever you would. Yeah. That that's what I enjoyed most. I know you always say that you get this from the best part of Fallout. It's just going off off the beaten track and mm. doing your own adventure. And I really, this is what I did with this game. Was I just, did you do it all the way through, or did you get to a point where it was like, ah, I'm done now? No, I think I throughout the whole game, I was trying to go through every little area. Trying to unlock every um, what they call bonfire, or whatever it was. Oh, sight of grace, yeah. Grace, sight of grace, unlocking that. Anything I'd miss, just trying to find. Because by the end, I was just trying to level up. Because I knew I was going to end up struggling with bosses and stuff. So I was just trying to get so much. The way I described someone, I think it's talking. I was talking to Evan because he started it and then he flaked mm. off it early on, mainly because the Japanese version doesn't let you change to English. Like you can oh, speak and you can speak and read Japanese, but where it's so obtuse already, mm. to then oh, add a yeah. second language in front of that makes it difficult. Oh. But I was saying, like I've, I definitely preferred the first sort of seventy percent of it. Mm. Um, but even when you feel like you're doing something that's probably like going through a cave or whatnot. There's always the chance that what you're going to find at the end of it is money in the bank for later. Like almost yeah. everything you do, in fact, because you're always getting some level of rune, which lets you level up, it yeah. is money in the bank. Like yeah, It's like it's might, might be useful, yeah. In fact, I might not even have the ability to use this weapon because no. my dexterity is too low. Mm. But when I do... I'm going to be at a wreck smash. But there's a couple of times when I've got something and I was like, that is pap. I've wasted real stat yeah. points on that. I've been... Like, you use yeah. it, I was like, is that it? <laughs> oh, <fucking laughs> hell. But there was okay, definitely I... things that I worked towards and I got and then I was like a beast for like yeah. that part of the game. Oh, well, yeah. I but was... there's so many classes and different things you can do. And this is the other thing about the game where mm. if it had like a proper onboarding process, that's yeah. got a tutorial, but a proper, it explains all the different... Not all the different stats, it's all written there, but how important it is mm. to build towards a strength. No, I don't mean the strength of the stat, I mean a you know, you a, ch you yeah. choose one or well, I'd say you choose one and health and go with it. That would have been far more useful to me because I would have then been like, right, I've got to make a choice of going magic or melee or, or whatever. Yeah. And it would have helped later on. But some yeah. sort of onboarding process, because there's so much depth to the classes, the builds, the stats. It's proper RPG in that sense. 
It really uh, is. Yeah, the, yeah. the armor, like all the items you put, the, the ta- talisman that you put on, mm. like it's hugely deep, but you have to find how deep it is by reading up or finding out from exactly. from a people yeah. mostly. Like a, a really like an optional in depth onboarding process, I think would be would be, yeah. would be great. But yeah, I definitely agree with that. But yeah, no, I enjoyed my time with it. I fucking like that. Just that. I loved getting to a boss that was beating my ass and eventually getting past them. And it just, normally that sort of thing like with Bloodborne, it, it would just beat me down so hard that I just felt I could never. But it was never, even when I was, I'd hit a wall and I was like, Fuck, I can't beat this. This is why this game's so approachable is because I could fuck off and go and do yeah. something else. Mm-hmm. And I'm constantly progressing. I'm hitting stuff that's bigger than me and getting shit loads of ruins. I feel like a boss on this fucking horse because I can just roar around chopping yep. heads off and I'm constantly getting ruined so I'll just grind this little area out and just I, I found quite a good little um, farming type. farming zone. Yeah. It was like right at the beginning it was like killing trolls. I was just ripping around them and getting me levels up so I never felt... I could do that, that like, in like 90 seconds and get like yeah. 5k runes and I was like... Whoop. Exactly, that was it. I was like, that is perfect for me. So I never felt... And I know you can do that in other games, can't you? You can do that in Black yeah. if you put thing. But it just, I don't know, there was something about this open worldness that I never felt under as constant threat as I do playing Bloodborne or Demon Souls. Um... I just it, it this made me feel like a bit of a badass and uh, I just I did, really did love my world at the time of it. Um I played it for almost I think it was really annoying, something like ninety eight hours. <laughs> 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 really need to go back and just get those two under my belt just to polish it. But yeah, in the end I, I ended up um beating every single boss that's like main boss that's in there. Obviously I'm not completed every single variation of every fucking <laughs> yeah. I've I've, played, I've fought every boss but just not every variation of every boss. Um and now I'm think I'm about three trophies from the platinum. Uh, um, but that job. does require me to go back and complete it two more times. Well, but yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Like you say, yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I fucking loved it. Like it was enjoyable, but it's far from a perfect game. It's not. It's not the second coming. Wow. But it's a fucking. It's very good. It's very good for what it is. And if anyone does want to get into these type of fucking, if they want to give themselves the punishment, this is the one to jump on. I think. I think. Yeah, I, I agree totally with agree with that. And. It's a shame about the technical issues. I think they they'd mm. be it's constant with them. It's like an Achilles heel. Yeah, go back and play Bloodborne. Yeah. That runs like an absolute piece of dog shit. In, like, worse yeah. because it doesn't even run over thirty. But I just <laughs> I just wish they could just get it right. Because the like, of money now, the amount of money they make from this, there's oh, yeah. no excuse to pump that into fucking resources to get. The here's, next. here's the thing about the technical stuff. It's one of yeah. Perhaps it might even be the only thing that's that would objectively, without any bias or preference, make a game better. Mm. Because you could say, well, any gameplay system is subjective, isn't it? Because you know you might play it and think that feels like shit, and I might play it and go, "Core cool, liquid feels like mm. I feel like a badass." But everyone feels performance. Yeah, some feel it more than others, or less than others. But it's a, it's yeah. it's a very it's not a, it's not a preference, is it? If a game runs at solid sixty, it feels better to, than a game that runs at forty. Hmm. That's the that's the that's the frustrating thing about the technical side of things. But I I digress. Hmm. I've got the keys out. I've already unlocked the door. Got to the go door. to go in the gallery. Wolf where are we in. where are we going for you? I'm gonna go gold for me. I think lovely old need- job. Yeah. I agree that it needs it could have so many quality of life improvements um, that it does have a plethora of problems but what just the world in the world building the excitement of roaring round the exploration the enemy designs the fucking work like just the environments as well going through castles like they they called them le- i think it was legacy dungeons I that's it and they were like, like that was like playing bloodborne and dungeons that was yeah they incredible. were incredible they were that cool. was like going through stormvale castle yeah. and stuff yeah just yeah it they were really I, cool I 
It was very cool. Um, to execute and, yeah. a game that was never open world before, they yeah. kept the fundamental cleverness of the design still mm. just buried in the world and then made an open world that was, you know... I think the game lends itself to an open world because everything counts. Yeah. Everything yeah. counts. You know, not everything, because you might pick up a weapon and say, that's the staff, I don't, <laughs> use, I don't use magic. Yeah, but you can trade it in for some runes, like... It, to to a certain extent, everything counts. So everything you pick up is is worth having a look at and seeing whether you can mm. you can use it to your advantage. And like I said, money in the bank is the name of the game. Get yeah. get in there early. I would agree. I'm going to dump it in the gold as well. I think that's just uh, mm. yeah. I don't think it's. I moaned a lot about this, but I feel like people don't moan yeah. enough about it. Yet no, still, sure. it's better than the sum of its parts. At the end of the day, it's, yeah. a, it's a great video game. Mm. It isn't for everyone. No. It's not better in the bush. And this yeah. isn't some sort of, oh, I'm better the game. This is preference. Because... I'm surprised. Biff I don't want... So much of it. Well, he played like f- quite a few hours. He got up to, yeah. We were on par together. We were going along and I was sort of texting him, like, where are you up to? And we got to the same part and he got up to the royal capital mm. and then chucked it. <laughs> to be honest, there was that was perhaps the worst area for me. I didn't enjoy that right, whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what done him in. But this is Biff, <laughs> like he's got to one yeah. let one mission from Assassin's Creed and walked away from it. He's got no shame, the man. But yeah. two golds from the uh, the yep. governors of gaming for Elden Ring, uh, a great game and easily a front runner for game of the year. <laughs> um, yeah, that yeah. is absolutely. Now look. I kind of did this on purpose because I wanted to play out exactly how real life operated in that Elden Ring sucked all the energy out of, <laughs> of yeah. Horizon Forbidden West zone. So I'm going to ask you to, and this is cruel, is that, you don't know this, but Horizon Forbidden, Forbidden West has got an hour worth of chat with me talking to Logan about yeah. it. So it's getting, it's got, it's, it's had its shine already. You've just not listened to it or seen it. Nah. But in the spirit of how things pan out, we're gonna. You're gonna truncate your your views yeah. on Horizon Forbidden West in Elden Ring's <laughs> shadow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to to be like as I was saying before, talking about Elden Ring, that yeah, that little devil and angel, and it really did great on me to the point that I, it was leaving me with a real sour taste in my mouth. Like I I was getting annoyed by Aloy. I couldn't care what <laughs> these fucking characters were doing. I really wasn't enjoying my time and I was looking for excuses just to get off of it and go back. And then once Elden Ring was done, the dust was settled, I was like, right, I need to start going back to these games. And that's when I started finishing, I think I went through Halo. I, was, I kept putting off Horizon. I was like, I don't really don't want to go back. I really have this sour taste that I didn't enjoy it. Um, and alas, I got through my games and I was like, right, what's left now? And there it was. I've Horizon. cleansed me palette. Like, cleanse me palette with another big open world. And I was like, I'm not starting it again because I was about, <laughs> I'm about 30 hours right, in. I think yeah. I played. So I played a good bit of it, but still. And I was like, right. I, can, I remember where I was. I think I even watched uh, the YouTube video of the cutscenes just to get up to where I remember. Oh, I got okay. To, just to sort of refresh because it had been a couple of months, three yeah. months maybe. Um, and then, yeah, I sort of got right. I sort of. Tried to go and it's like, right, let's forget anything that's happened before. Let's go in fresh and we'll just start again. Forget all what's happened previously. And I've got to say, I did enjoy the game more that way. Okay. I think the influence of Elden Ring and being that same similar open world and, you know, there was so much of, this is the true open world. We're sick of all these open world games with this. Yeah, fucking waypoints and that, and that really did play on my mind. And so having that poison out of my head, and I've got to say, when I, I just I, I stuck to the the main missions, this was then I was like, right, I'm gonna get the story done, so I know that's done. And then if I'm still enjoying it enough, I'll go and do the platinum. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I continued on, um, played through to the story. Um, I don't think I did much. No, I don't think I did any side stories at all until after. And then after the story was done, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going oh, to, I'm going to, I'm still enjoying playing this. Uh, I'm going to get the platinum. And I did. I stuck another, yeah. I've, I've done it relatively quick. I think I've done it in about 60 hours. 
<laughs> the... fucking in the after time yeah. I, spent. Oh. I was gonna say yeah i remember i was listening to your it was what i listened to, i completed it the story and then i was listening to oh your, we've done the spoiler and, cast of course yeah the spoiler, i listened to that yours and evan's chat whilst <laughs> i was cl- sort of clearing down things i'd missed because i was playing that's what i think it was as well i was playing it the same as you i was going you start from point the to point right yeah. the name, and i was literally clearing down everything yeah. as i went it's a and sickness then, the sickness, yeah, and so this then I come back and just went right. Let's just mainline this, yeah, and yeah, but yeah, no, um, I'm, I have lost a bit of the spark that I got from the first game. I will admit, yeah. overall, Sony, you've blown um, it. Yes, yeah, it's a stinker. No, it's not a stinker, but I. I, I listening to your conversation there was a lot of things I agreed with on some of it. I just characters I I just thought I didn't find them that interesting. Like I think you're right, I think that um who's the chap with one arm? I think he might have been the best. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he was C- the Cast- 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 Costello Costello, something like that. The Callisto Pro <laughs> oh, God Schofield, loving it. Yeah, him. him. Uh, Ayla started to get on my nerves and you just go, I'm going to be referring to what you say, but they, I, f- I feel like they never really give Aloy, they don't humanise Ayla enough. Yeah. She's sort of just this character that's saving the world and you don't, you know, she doesn't have any relationships with any of the characters, you know. As a, she has like a beer with, um, who's that fucking, the brute geezer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you know who he is. I forget them. I literally played it like three days ago and I forgot their names already. It's not Earl, it's not Earl but <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah. Errol. Um, I can't fucking remember. It's like my brain. But yeah, um, yeah. I just want it. I want to see Aloy a bit more humanised than sort of how she's dealing with being the pressures of being this fucking major hero saving the world. Errand. Aaron, that's it. Aaron, um, yeah. Story wise, eh, yeah, it is what it is. You know, it's it's it can, it's interesting to see where it goes from here. I, th- I don't think story wise and character wise, this, crap. This, that's yeah. I, I don't think it was. That's not my. It was the weakest part of the game. Yeah. No. Um, but combat, combat was. Fun the, the new incl- the new inclusion like some of the different machines mm, not dinosaurs yeah. machines yeah. <laughs> those machines There's some brilliant um yes yeah, like that fucking was shout out to that spine yeah fucking slaughter thing. spine slaughter spine some of them fights with them were fucking awesome yeah um yeah. I really like the cauldrons I know you said that you yeah, didn't really just, get on with them I just don't like being contained in that game but mm. yeah they they are what they are there's something different to do I yeah. Guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a plethora of things to do. Open world, you know. It it did become just a, a clear down a bloat. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. No, I. Uh, it is. What I'm, it I'm is. interested. It is what it is. Yeah, like I say, I feel I'm a bit downbeat on it mm. overall, just because it. I, I don't like to admit it, but I was skipping conversations in this i don't tend to typically do that in open like in games where there's so much like a mass effect or but hope you weren't choosing all the conversation trees and then skipping them i I was in some of them yeah (laughs) in side quests and stuff i was just going next well just in case i was thinking like if in case they say something exciting (laughs) it'll give me something like i was like trying to read the subtitles as quick as i could yeah a lot of people do that to be fair I was doing it for a bit, and then until I go, I'm not taking this in, and then just yeah, skipping. This wasn't a main mission. This is on side quests and stuff. Yeah, that's what that was my rule. I listened to main conversations in the if it was regarding quest. the main turns, and then when it got to a side quest, and I'd go to like a camp, and there'd be like some camp, and they'd be like, "Oh, I've lost my brother. Can you go far? Nah, I'll just go, nah. next, 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 next. Right. So, um, well, yeah. Where are we putting this one then? Is it going well? Actually, the kit, the doors are open, but I can lock them again. If it's can lock it, disgusting. We're skipping no, cutscenes. No, go no. it in there. Okay. I'll, I'll give it a silver. A silver drops a down s- from the gold. Still solid. 
still solid. I, I enjoyed the combat. The, the world is still... It, it looks fucking phenomenal. Much. It runs it like does, butter. It does. Yeah, it runs like butter. It's gorgeous to look at. Yeah, yeah. it really is. Um, I think I played it because they've enhanced it, they, a little bit? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. The, I did stick on that fidelity mode. I was like, cool. Beautiful. Yeah, the world's exciting. Looks gorgeous. The new monch machines are, br- are yeah. really fun and some good... Some good shit you can do with them. Story was serviceable. I, I I lost a lot of care for giving a fuck, to be honest. A bit downbeat on it. Crapped on it. Me. There we yeah. go. If you, if you want to hear a good one, listen to yours and Evan's spoiler cast. I think that covers everything. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit long, but yeah, if, you've got a few, yeah. if you've got a few months of life, you can listen to that. Go back yeah. into the archives and find our Horizon Forbidden West spoiler cast. Well, that's it. Elden Ring versus... Horizon Forbidden West is complete. We're going to wrap up for this week's episode. Nothing more for us to say here, though, other than thanks for your time and ta da. This was a Dimp Digital production.